Black Mirror is a fascinating, engaging, and very frustrating TV show. I say frustrating because when this show is operating at the top of its game, it can be emotionally resonant, thematically rich, and dramatically powerful. But it can also be empty, obvious, awkward, and pointless. Every episode of Black Mirror offers the viewer something different, a self-contained story that takes place in a purely fictional or disturbingly recognizable world. And I've been growing increasingly frustrated with this show with every new season, and season 5 was the height of my frustration. I f***ed a polar bear, and I still couldn't get you out of my mind. There's a lot to unpack with season 5, but as I was watching the episodes, one question kept running through my head. What makes an episode of Black Mirror good? Generally, I try to approach this show on an episode-by-episode -episode basis, not trying to compare them too closely because they're intended to be viewed individually. Well, except for Black Museum, but that episode sucked anyway. The criteria I apply to pretty much every episode, though, is based on the feeling of authenticity. Does the world that the episode builds feel authentic, or does it feel implausible? Also, and more importantly, how do the characters feel in the context of that world? Do they feel authentic or hollow? And finally, through the character's journey, does the conclusion of the episode feel earned? Does it feel authentic or forced? But because the show is always rooted in what is supposed to be relatable human conflict, it sometimes suffers by pushing the concepts and characters into the realm of disbelief. To me, every episode in season 2 has this distinct problem. The premises of the episodes are pushed beyond the the point where I find them conceivable and the stories lose me. I realize that makes me sound like a real stick in the mud, but the purpose of this show has always struck me as cautionary tales, warning us about where technology might be leading us based on what we already know and experience. I'm capable of suspending disbelief, but only so far. Basically, when I lose the feeling that these stories can ever truly be experienced, the story loses me. The photorealistic android, the theme park to punish a criminal for the rest of her life, and the holographic bear becoming the face of a dystopian police state do not make me question the role of technology in everyday life they make me question why I just wasted three hours. That ties into probably the biggest complaint I have about this show, which is that the concepts of some episodes tend to overshadow the characters, which is the real heart of the show. Because if we don't care about the people experiencing these concepts, why should we care about the concepts at all? Episodes like Playtest, USS Callister, Metalhead, and Black Museum stick out to me in terms of this issue. The idea of an authentic world may not be the problem with these episodes, but the idea of authentic characters definitely is. These episodes get so bogged down in exploring the minutia of their concepts that the characters feel like an afterthought, and just sort of float along until the end. The episode might give them a purpose, but it doesn't feel like that purpose is propelling the story forward. Maybe this is done to build up a theme of inevitability, like these characters are trapped in these scenarios and can't break free of them no matter how hard they try, but more often than not, they just feel passive. I'm always down for some world building, but I want more from a story than just wouldn't it be crazy if this happened? I also don't want to think that my perception of the show is too limited, and that it always has to be tales of morality and existentialism, but that's what makes the show unique. I want to walk away from a Black Mirror episode feeling like I've gained a new perspective, the kind of perspective that I've chosen to ignore because of the convenience of modern technology. You know, like, the point of the show? But if we're just going along on these fun little science fiction adventures that get kind of dark, but never that dark, like we have been for the majority of the past few seasons, it almost feels like a different show than where it started. It seems to be moving away from legitimate commentary and more towards surface-level explorations of mildly interesting concepts. What if you went into VR and it was like... Super VR. What if Boston Dynamics robots became evil? What if you could have sex in Street Fighter? The actually interesting commentary these scenarios offer is ignored in favor of just showing the concept play out and having some tenuous emotional drama happen alongside it. When I first watched Striking Vipers, I was pretty curious how it would explore the idea of this man who has sex as a virtual woman and finds it more pleasurable than sex in real life questioning gender identity, sexual identity, there's layers there. Oh, wait, the episode doesn't explore that.
at all. Also, why do they keep casting such recognizable actors in these episodes? It's very distracting. To be fair, the characters are so thin that it's hard to see much of them beyond the actors. I just see Topher Grace in a bad wig here. And I get why they cast Miley Cyrus, like the meta joke is there, but it's way too on the nose. And why did they make Black Museum? Why did they mess with the anthology structure and tie everything together in this half-baked mess of ideas? At this point, you might be thinking, Ross, do you even like this show? All you seem to have is complaints, and that's fair. So let's switch gears for a second. My favorite episode of the show is the National Anthem. Yes, the one where the Prime Minister has sex with a pig on live TV to save a kidnapped princess, aka the worst pitch for a Super Mario game ever. What I love most about that episode is how the premise is a perfect showcase for a wide range of human behavior. There's no avenue that isn't explored. The protagonist, Michael Callow, has to deal with the government, the public, the media, his personal life, his professional image, and his responsibility to do what's right. All the while, he's trying to track the kidnapper down, dealing with the media's coverage of the event, handling his wife's growing concern that he'll go through with the demands of, you know, having sex with a pig on live TV, and figuring out whether he's even capable of going through with that. While all of this is happening, people around the country start watching the news obsessively to see if he'll actually go through with it. At first, they're supportive and outraged at the kidnapping, but they're always watching. Later in the episode, there's huge public outcry at the discovery that Callow's staff were trying to fake the broadcast, something he didn't even know about. From every angle, the pressure keeps building and and building, every contingency plan fails, and everyone is just watching. Finally, Callow is left with no other choice but to go through with the demands, and as the public, who were so excited to watch him humiliate himself, finally get what they want, excitement turns to disgust and shame. And in the end, it turns out the princess was released half an hour before the broadcast even started, so Callow never had to do what he did. It was all for nothing, and he'll never know it. The episode isn't just asking, what would you do in Callow's position, or just trying to shock you. It's asking if you would do what the episode's villain thinks you would do. Would you watch? Would you watch this entire story unfold and see a horrific event for temporary entertainment that you can never unsee? Has the way we view politicians and celebrities gotten to a point where they don't feel like people anymore, and only when we see them in their most vulnerable state can we see our own humanity reflected back? Judging by how engaged I was while watching this episode for the first time, and every time since, I think I know my answer. And when you compare the nuances of that episode to something like Rachel, Jack, and Ashley 2, it almost feels like the new episodes are being written by someone who watched one episode of Black Mirror, like, one time a few years ago and has a general idea of what it's about. That episode's narrative thrust is built around mostly accidental events. If the little Miley Cyrus robot hadn't seen that one news broadcast, then the villain's plan would have worked, which I think would have been a better ending. And just when you think the episode is about to have a point, the little robot starts cursing because comedy, I guess, and then two teenage girls are breaking into a pop star's home to rescue her from a secret coma. And then the episode ends with this big, victorious musical number, but I don't feel like this was a victory. Two teenage girls, a tiny consumer-grade robot, and a recently comatose Miley Cyrus stopped an evil music executive from selling a giant Miley Cyrus hologram, and then one of the teenage girls gets to play music with her in a bar. This is the show I'm supposed to take seriously or relate to my life somehow? Look, I'm not opposed to a happy ending. San Junipero has a happy ending, but that ending feels earned. The story puts the protagonist through some real, powerful, emotional drama to get there. The story deals with the creation of a digital afterlife, and the terrifying choice to let go of your past and embrace the unknown, to start fresh and be given a second chance for eternity, which we have no way of processing. On the other hand, in season 5, texting and driving is bad. I heard that, that you make these things that way. Addictive. So, 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 so that you can't take your eyes off them.
I really love it when shows yell their point at me. It really makes me feel like my intelligence as an audience member is being respected. And that's what's so frustrating about Black Mirror. It presents itself as a show that's rewarding on a deeper analysis, but with every new season, the stories are losing depth. The conflicts are shallow, the characters feel like empty puppets inside increasingly bland concepts, and the endings leave me with such disappointment. Every time I think about watching this show, it feels like a chore. So why do I keep watching? Well, because you never know. For every black museum, there's a white Christmas. For every archangel, there's a shut up and dance. For every smithereens, there's a 15 million merits. Black Mirror offers so much and has such a wealth of seemingly limitless potential that I will always look forward to more, or at least be curious about more. I know Charlie Brooker has relevant, important stories to tell because I can see the edges of them peeking out in every one of the episodes I hate except Metalhead. Maybe Brooker's production timeline has been sped up so much for Netflix that he doesn't have time to properly develop his ideas anymore, or maybe these episodes really are the best things he can come up with. Either way, it feels like the creative momentum of Black Mirror is slowing down, and in all honesty, I don't think the show has had any truly great episodes since season 3. I want to be excited and intrigued every time a new season rolls around, but now I'm inevitably going to view future seasons with skepticism. I want to be optimistic, but only in the pursuit of pessimism, because Black Mirror has given me some of the most satisfying pessimism I've ever experienced. I want the real Black Mirror back. I miss it. But who knows, maybe season 6 will be better. Or 7. Maybe 8. So guys, those are my thoughts on the current frustration I feel with Black Mirror. Thanks so much for watching, hopefully you enjoyed. If you liked this video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.